USA International Speedway in Lakeland, Florida, under caution with less than 20 laps to go in the Coors Light 250 from USA International Speedway in Lakeland, Florida. And joining us up here in the booth is the gentleman that has made this all possible. We're talking about the wing commander, uh, Mr. Bob Brooks, the president and CEO of Hooters of America. And Mr. Brooks, uh, your involvement in the series and your involvement here at USA International Speedway. You've built a great series and a beautiful racetrack. you got to be happy with everything. Well, I sure am, Robbie. It's a uh, beautiful night and a lot of good racing out there. I want to thank all the fans we have and all the, pe all the people who tuned in to it. Uh, and I want to tell you that we've got a lot more racing to go next year with this uh, new series of uh, Hooters Racing. Uh, we'll probably have another series next year, too, the way it looks like. And uh, I don't want to miss uh, seeing um, uh, hello to President Clintax out there. Um, <laughs> there um, and I want to thank all the people for supporting us on the EEOC problem we got. You would think that uh, with the government shut down and everything that they would have better things to do in Washington than to uh, try to force you to hire men as waiters at Hooters restaurants. Yeah, there'll be some justice someplace, but uh, they're trying to make it hard for us. They're trying to actually break us by uh, keep increasing the penalties and so forth. You know, the $22 million already in this. It's crazy, and uh, yes, sir, I, I can't I can't imagine where they would come up with a figure like that. It's idiotic, actually, and uh, they're just fabricating numbers. Well, one good thing to remember that you talk about the 1996 season, and again, 1996 is an election year. Uh, this is true, and uh, I don't know if Hooters going to make it pivotal one way or the other or not. <laughs> but uh, I do know there's a lot of things going on, and uh, I guess it's politics as usual. Pretty much, and there's some private agendas I think that are going on. You, you think we might see a few uh, chicken wings floating around the Republican convention in '96? I think you're going to see that, and a few frisbees and some hula hoops also. So. <laughs> well, I know that uh, even the the liberal mainstream media uh, the other night, I was watching one of the the main networks, and they said the same thing I just said. You'd think the government would have more important things to do than than to harass Hooters of America. Well, actually, I don't think it's the current um, uh, Congress is in. I think it's the, uh, well, it's obvious. The Clinton the Tax has. Administration. You got it. Well, Mr. Brooks, uh, the big things coming up in 1996 with uh, the uh, Hooters Cup Series, and we're getting a lot of interest from a lot of drivers from around the country. And the point fund next year uh, with uh, Miller Brewing Company getting on board, $512,000. The point winner is going to take home $110,000. That's $10,000 more than what the Bush Grand National Series pays. So you got to be getting some attention from some of the folks on Daytona Beach. Well, we're not really worried about that. We're not trying to be in competition to them. We're uh, actually just trying to be uh, good neighbors and, uh, and support the racing industry. We're having a lot of fun. And um, I believe you see now the. Uh, you got to love I these race better. fans here. I mean, they're they're behind you 110 percent on this thing. Yes, and we got pretty much a full house tonight, and it's uh, really good. We'll be probably involved with some more tracks, a lot of the three-quarter and, and you know, one-mile tracks, and uh, we have a long ways to go. And uh, we just want to be good for uh, the guys out there in, in racing. Well, we've really, this series has really come a long ways for a first-year series. So you know. I mean, just watch, watch what some of the other series. It takes an eight or ten years to get to the point where this, this series has come to. It's it's quite an accomplishment. Well, actually, we don't have to make money with this like some people do. So we're here to have fun and uh, interact with our customers and so you know it's uh, actually it's a lot of fun. The and drivers love it. Yeah, I've talked with a lot of them. They they, they feel like they um, they really love this track too. And so. Uh, well, we certainly appreciate you uh, taking time out of your busy evening to uh, come up with us. And I know Dick Anderson wants to uh, say something to you. Well, Mr. Brooks, on behalf of all these race car drivers, I know you don't uh, get time to see them all, but I'd really like to thank you for making this Hooters series a premier series for us late model racers. And I tell you what, this only gets better and better. And I'd personally like to thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dick. And uh, we, we're going to help to make it better and better, I think. So. Well, I tell you what, you've sure made a lot of late model racers awful happy. I can tell you that. Well, one thing that uh, we heard earlier that perhaps Dave Mater III was having an engine problem, but you really didn't see any evidence of it uh, looking at it from Mario Gosselin's standpoint in that third spot. Well, you look at the, the fact that the advantage you might get with four new tires, if those tires aren't matched up the way you want them to, that car's still not going to handle any better than it did on worn-out tires. So that may be Mario's problem 
and the engine problem that Frankie Grill talked about may not be as, as serious as he tried to make it out to be either. So they might be playing a, a few head games out there as well. It might be, and it and it seems like it's some more banners. Oh, yeah, President Clintax, keep your hands off our hooters. And some food for thought there is, uh, as we mentioned with uh, Mr. Brooks, uh, the EEOC is uh, – trying to put some penalties on Hooters of America for their hiring practices. They want Hooters guys as well as Hooters girls. And uh, I know if I was going into a Hooters, I don't know if I'd want a Hooters guy waiting on me at my table. I think I would move well, you can to even the talk table to with some, the Hooters girl. You can even talk to some of the women, and I don't think they'd really want to go into that situation. Maybe they ought to start a different restaurant for just that. That could be. Scott Hansen out in front. Dave Mater the third in second. Third will be Mario Goslett in car number 10, the Budweiser Chevrolet. He's looking for his 10th straight top three finish. And we are getting set to do battle. 241 laps in the books. Nine laps to go. The green flag is out. Scott Hansen will open up about a five-car length advantage as Gosselin is off the pace. Mario Gosselin, the Budweiser Chevrolet, the streak will end here unless something spectacular happens because Mario Gosselin is off the pace coming in the and pits. he is coming down Had pit to be road. A tire. Boy, is this going to change the complexion of the point battle now, Mark Bouchardi. Well, that's going to carry it right on into uh, the last race of the season, and fans are looking for that kind of point battle. And Mario Gosselin is waving to his crew. Perhaps it looks like he may have run out of fuel. Oh, that would be disastrous. The first bad luck he's had basically in the second half of the season. The laps are winding down. Mario Gosselin taking on fuel. The Budweiser Chevrolet. Now the question is, will it restart? They're having to push it down pit road. We've got quite a battle going on out on the track. Scott He's Hansen. running too wide down in turn two and three. I mean, three and four. A three-car battle for the second Whoa. spot. And Garvey and Gill get together behind Dave Mater down the front straightaway. Mater running in the second spot. Mike Garvey has moved up to third. And that had to, Mario Gosselin being on pit road had to, make a wake-up call for Mike Garvey because now he's back in the championship hunt. Yes, he is. With a good finish at, at uh, the Snowball Derby, he could be right in there for the, the title. Scott Hansen is out in front with just a few laps remaining, four laps to go. Scott Hansen with about a half a straightaway lead on this three-quarter mile high banked oval at USA International Speedway over Dave Mater the third in car number 92. Mike Garvey in the second spot. Bobby Gill in third. That is second third and fourth that you're looking at on your screen. So they are battling it out for position in the remaining laps, but Dick Anderson, it looks like they're not gonna catch Scott Hansen. No, it looks like Scott Hansen's got it wrapped up. But Dave Mater with Frankie Grill reporting on those engine problems, it doesn't look like it from what we're seeing. It's, it's hanging in there pretty good. I'm yeah, really one little glitch and when you're running for a win, one little glitch would be a big, big thing if you're, you're trying to win a race. Oh, for sure. I'm not sure how many cars we do have on the lead lap, but I'm sure that Mario Gosselin lost at least one lap while he was in the pits because he came in and perhaps maybe the radio communication was not working because it didn't look like they were sure what the problem was when he came in. He signaled for fuel. They put fuel in the car. He's back out, but he's way behind. White flag is out. One lap to go. Scott Hansen out in front. Dave Mater tried to hang on to that second spot with... Mike Garvey and Bobby Gill right behind him. Scott Hansen out of Franklin, Wisconsin brings car number 53 home with the win in the Coors Light 250. And Dave Mater the third looks like he hang, hung on for the second spot with Mike Garvey in third, Bobby Gill in the fourth spot. And it was close for that position, the second spot right down to the end, Dick Anderson. Well, I tell you what, this has been an exciting race, Roby. Uh, I tell you what, the people have got a lot to look forward to coming here to see a race. This race had a little bit of everything, lots of lead changes, lots of changes for position, some good pit stop action, but Scott Hansen, the guy that put it all together, and it seemed like the last third of the race that uh, he pretty much established himself as the driver to beat. He sure did, and of course I'm a little biased, but I'm uh, really proud of those guys with that Dodge. They came from way back and did an excellent job. 
There as, we go. As the fireworks go up in the air over the top of USA International Speedway in Lakeland, Florida, as Scott Hansen making the long haul in from Franklin, Wisconsin, right outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, coming home with the win in the Coors Light 250. And he'll bring that number 53 car down into the Hooters winner circle and his new associate sponsor carrying the win home for them to the Porter Cable Power Tools based out of Jackson, Tennessee. And uh, those are also uh, distributed with the Home Depot. So they've got to be real happy with Scott Hansen as he climbs out of the automobile. A very happy winner down there, Mark. Especially after this is his third race with Hooters. He had some bad luck up in Columbus and he got caught up in a wreck there at Toledo. So he was really looking forward to some big things. He had told us even before he raced the first race that he was gonna race the Hooters Cup Series next year, trying to run for the championship. And uh, we still got fireworks going yeah. off in the back straight away. We had fireworks on the racetrack a few times and now we've got them behind the grandstands. Now Scott Hansen drove the Chevrolet into the winner's circle tonight. Sometimes he drives a Ford and he's got a trick driving suit. Yes, he does. He's got a pocket that folds one way for a Ford and one way for a Chevrolet. So he was showing that at the driver's meeting one time about that's how you fix a driver's suit so you can race different places with different cars. Got to have the flap on the pocket. He's got the Chevrolet flap up tonight as he is in the winner's circle and our Doug Rice is down there uh, getting set. Now, Doug Rice, you can see him in your picture there. He's getting out of the way. He's gotten good at uh, avoiding the champagne spray, but one of these days, somebody's going to get him. And I think we might have to set that up one time. So Doug Rice getting set up and he's ready to go. Take it away, Doug Rice in victory lane. It's a long way from Franklin, Wisconsin to Lakeland, Florida, and it was worth every mile that Scott Hansen had to travel. Let's squeeze in here and get Scott Hansen away from his ceremony for a second. Scott, about two thirds of the way into this race, you started to flex some muscle, and after that, they couldn't lay a hand on you. I'll tell you, I can't say enough for Goodyear and the tires that they've been bringing to these series. You know, the tires were just perfect. My guys had a little trouble in their stop, but it was good, you know. And the car was just flawless. You know, I got so many people to thank. We blew up, we didn't have a spare motor. Larry Raines gave us a motor here this morning. And, uh, you know, it's just a great deal, you know, come down here and really not know any of these guys. And they go and they lend us their spare motor and come out and win a race like this. Now, Scott, you told me earlier that your season in ASA had been real disappointing. You come in here and win one of the biggest Hooters Cup races of the year. That's got to take the edge off that disappointment. Well, I tell you, you know, all year long we struggle in that series. And uh, we went west and won at Phoenix a couple weeks ago, and we won here now. And I'll tell you, the year can't end any greater. You know, we got to go run tomorrow. I uh, hope we have a good day over there. And uh, can't say enough for these Hooters people, you know, all these officials, tech people, everything. They just, you know, they, they treat us, you know, like you can't believe. And that's what we really appreciate, and that's what we like running for. Scott Hansen, he's the winner here tonight. Now, they have a phenomenon here in Florida. It's called the Snowbird. You can't get on a golf course down here after the month of November because everybody from up in the Northeast in Canada is down here playing golf. They weren't playing golf today, but they sure shot well here in the Coors Light 250 at the USA International Speedway. Scott Hansen goes away with a great big trophy and a great big check. Thank you very much, Doug Rice and Mark Bouchardi. Quite a story developing down there as Scott Hansen borrowing an engine from Larry Range this morning, and maybe Larry Range has now found out maybe what some of his problems are. He's got the wrong engine in the car. He might have been saving the wrong one, especially after what happened to him two weeks ago. He had a race that he thought he, he should have won. He come close to winning. Now he loans his backup motor to Scott Hansen, and he wins a race with it. And these fans here at USA International Speedway, over 10,000 strong tonight on this brand new three quarter mile paved high banked oval here in Lakeland, Florida. We're just between Tampa and Orlando, Florida. A couple of good market areas to draw from. And these fans have been treated to a fantastic race tonight. As, it, as we said before, it had a little bit of everything in it. And uh, you know, before before we go off the air, we, we got to take care of some business. Mark's writing me a note here. We got to say happy birthday to the gentleman that helped us out up here tonight, Dick Anderson, celebrating a birthday tomorrow. Uh, Nikki Narone, the daughter of uh, Hooters Cup race director Don Narone, celebrating a birthday tonight. And uh, Mark Bashardi, happy birthday to you on Monday. Thank you, buddy. I'm a little bit past the, for the 40 mark now. 
But I've enjoyed everything. And Dick Anderson told me to tell you that he had to get down there with his crew. They were happy with the way the car ran, and he wanted to celebrate. So he couldn't stick around to say goodbye.